This ain't your ordinary football show. It's the Old Dominion Football Show with Bruce Raider and Coach Bobby Wilder. The off week couldn't have come at a better time. Two wins to start off the season, followed by three losses. The young Old Dominion Monarchs and their patient staff have been given a chance to regroup, reevaluate, and prepare for a stretch of conference games. What was accomplished, who's healthy, and who is not? Let's find out. The homecoming edition of the Old Dominion Football Show starts now. I'm Bruce Rader along with Coach Bobby Wilder as we get ready for Saturday's homecoming game against Charlotte. Coach, tell us, what did you accomplish mm -hmm. during this bye week? A couple major things got accomplished, Bruce. Number one, we had eight days total uh, that they were uh, away from game preparation so six of the days was all about rest recovering academics really focus on academics give them some time to go home with such a young football team some of our players have been here since july 1st and they haven't been home you're talking about 34 freshmen that haven't been home since july 1st so ability to do that but two very good practice days two major scrimmages where we did a lot of situational football and got a lot of work done so i feel really good about the attitude of the team starting with the second half of the season now you said a couple of weeks ago that you challenged your guys to respond mm -hmm. with pride and passion and mm -hmm. play physical football they seem to respond well in that mm -hmm. 20 point loss to marshall mm -hmm. uh did you see that this is continuing throughout mm -hmm. this bye week I did, Bruce. I'm a firm believer. I've been coaching for 29 years, and I really feel like with young people, everything starts with attitude. You know, what is your attitude? What is your approach? And I'm a firm believer in, in PMA, what I call positive mental attitude, that you have to have a positive mental attitude in life. That's the only way to take a setback and turn it into a comeback is, is with your attitude. You're not going to roll the dice and get lucky. That, that's not how it works. You've got to have a great attitude in your approach. And what we did was we recognized that Appalachian State game, we owned it, that we did not perform at a high level. And we went, we went down to, to Marshall, a team that's won 17 out of 18 at home, and we competed for the entire football game. You mentioned three words, pride, passion, and being physical. We were all of those things. Well, we also recognize and we need to own the fact that the last time we were in front of our fans at SB Ballard Stadium, we did not perform at the level we need to perform at. So it's all about the attitude. Great attitude by the kids, and, and we're going to take that into Saturday's game. You've got a lot of young players on your roster. Many mm -hmm. of them had not been home since <laughs> midsummer. Right. Just because you didn't play last Sunday, though, mm -hmm. they had to put in work during the week. But do mm -hmm. you see them all being sort of re-energized going into the next seven games? Yeah, I do, and that's a great question, Bruce. It's interesting with the 53 players that have played in the last two games, 33 of them are first or second year players so we're the youngest team in conference usa one of the youngest in the country and what i'm always focused on with a younger football team you don't have to worry about these things with a veteran team but with a younger team they need some time off you know this is my first time as a head coach in in seven years now of coaching a football team at old dominion where i've given them an entire weekend off they had friday off after class bruce and they had saturday and sunday and i just felt like they needed to get away they needed to, to get some time away from it, get with family, get with friends, kind of evaluate themselves where they are, and then get re-energized for the second half of the year, and I felt like we accomplished that. All right, one thing that we talked about that you wanted to emphasize was improving on third down mm -hmm. on both sides of the football. Yeah, we had uh, 200 plays, Bruce, over those two scrimmages last Wednesday and Thursday, and probably 50 of those plays, 25% were third down situations, and then the result of the third down to play fourth down. So for example, if it was a third and 10 and the offense gained four yards, we were playing fourth and six. So to be in those critical situations, and right now, Bruce, that's an area we're struggling as a team. Uh, we're only converting 38% on offense, uh, which is 10th in the league. We're allowing 48% on defense, which is 12th. So I, I've always felt like, Bruce, with your football team, if, if you can control third down a little better, it puts you in a better situation. You get three more plays on offense, so you get to go on the sideline on defense. So we really focused on our calls and our players understanding the calls and those down and distance. All right, we got about 30 seconds. The quarterback is always the focal point of the football team. Mm -hmm. How is your freshman, Shuler Bentley, holding up? Had a great past uh, 10 days here of, of practice. Last week, Bruce, he was 68% in those two major scrimmages. We emphasized throwing the ball. We probably threw it 150 out of 200 reps. So he's hanging in there. He understands it's a process, but he also knows he's got to perform better.
All right. Still to come. It's a special one-minute drill. You know why, <laughs> oh, Coach? Boy. We've got quarterbacks coach Ron Whitcomb coming up next on the Old Dominion Football Show. One, two, three, pop! Welcome back to the Old Dominion Football Show and the One Minute Drill. And we're going to go coordinator today. We're talking to Ron Wickham, the quarterback's coach at Old Dominion. So you've actually had uh, quite a few studs in your time here at Old Dominion. But uh, which of the quarterbacks could you outthrow in a game? In a game? All of them. Um, I don't think I've ever had anybody here that can throw it as far as I can. But uh, accuracy, I don't think I'm going to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Taylor. He's pretty, he's pretty good when it comes to that. How long have you known Bobby Wilder? I've known Bobby Wilder since I was 17 years old. Uh, he recruited me out of high school, and uh, I started for him for all four years at the University of Maine, and uh, I left about four months after uh, he took the job here. He's probably as much of a father to me as my, my actual father, seeing that they've both split me about 15 years apiece. How much would you say you know about Bobby Wilder? Uh, I know a lot about, about Coach Wilder, and uh, what you see is what you get. Um, there's not uh, another person when you get in the locker room. Um, he's just super upbeat, always positive. He's always been like that, even when he was at Maine. What's the one time you think you ticked him off? Um, probably the one time that I got under Coach Wilder's skin is, uh, you know, coming out of high school, maybe he had a superstition, and he, he, he snapped at me, and he's like, you know, there are no such things as superstitions. You know, you know, you win the game on execution, and really that's how I am now. You know, I'm, he kind of coached that out of me. Best moment so far at Old Dominion for you is what? Probably was when we made it to the playoffs for the first time. Being one of the four members of the staff that started this program from scratch, I remember when we had one office and two pens. And now, to, you know, when we went to that first playoff game, to me it was like, you know, that was a definite accomplishment. Ron Wickham, quarterback's coach at Old Dominion. He's produced two of the best quarterbacks in the country, maybe another one coming with Drew Bentley. So last thing I'll ask you, Coach, is uh, say goodbye to the Monarch Nation for us. Appreciate you having me. Look forward to seeing you guys this season. Ain't no more to it. Saturday is homecoming against Charlotte. The parade begins on campus at 11 o'clock, continues until 1230. Now the tailgates will open at 10 a.m. for only a half an hour. Then they'll close down, reopen again at 1230. Both teams come into the game with two and three records and are coming off five weeks. Coach, mm -hmm. tell us about Charlotte. They are ahead of where I thought they would be, Bruce. This is only their third year playing, so I equate it to 2011 when we were going into the CAA for our first year. They're very good on defense. They're their number one defense in the league out of 13 teams in yards allowed. And on third down, they're struggling on offense. They've turned the ball over 21 times on offense, but they have a very good running back, a transfer from West Virginia, who's a good player. So they're making a lot of progress with their program. They've been competitive, Bruce. Only one game they've been blown out in, that was Middle Tennessee. Everybody else has been good football games. Can you beat them? Yes, we can. That's the plan. And that's a much-needed win coming up. <laughs> You're right. Yeah, we, we need to, particularly coming back, Bruce, off the last time we were at home. This is homecoming. The alumni are back. It's a big day for Old Dominion University. Nothing spells out success on homecoming like a win. That's the goal. All right. Well, homecoming is special for the players and the fans and the staff. And as Coach said, there's always an extra incentive mm -hmm. to win on this special sure day. Is. Kickoff Saturday afternoon is at 3.30. Old Dominion against Charlotte. Have a great homecoming, everybody. And join us back here next week and, well, every Friday every night Friday, when they're not playing <laughs> baseball yeah. at 1045 for the Old Dominion Football Show. Good luck, Coach. Thank you. Appreciate it.